Guys, welcome to Kingfisher's Trace Clinic. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button if you like our shows. Okay, today I'm doing cob throw bait with quarantine. What we require to make this trace is some of our 19 kilo kingfisher. That's gonna be used for our sinker snooting. And uh, we've got five O. Depending on the size of the actual carry, you can go either bigger or smaller. 48260 mustard hook. Just one of those, that's all we require. We've got number three power swivels. We need two of those. Um, sui. 5 that's our mustard. It's an offset hook, very, very nice. Short shank. That's gonna be our holding hook. And then our beads, just as a stopper. That's all we require. Okay, to start off with, I've got some FC 50 pound for our hook snoot. I'm gonna cut off about a meter of it, and we're just gonna utilize it. The FC works extremely well in that it's a hard line, high abrasive line. So for frame purposes, if the cob takes it in too deep, um, the teeth at the back won't actually rub it off. And of course, for going through rocks, FC fluorocarbon, that's a Siglon uh, fluorocarbon, is excellent for ma uh, making these traces. Okay. okay, guys, so we take our FC fluorocarbon, we make it about a meter in length. We attach our 5 or 4 candle round, depending on the size of the quarantine that you're actually using. And we tie a figure of eight. Don't forget at the bottom there's a link to see how we tie the figure of eight. One, two, three times. So I'm going to work through this a lot faster. There's our figure of eight. Slide it down. Pull tight. Cut off the tag end. Then what we do is we take our sui. We go through the eye, we slide it down, and what we do is we measure it out according to the size of the bait that we're using. So I've got my quarantine there, I know pretty much what size to make it, so that's the size I want it to be. Pinch it in your fingers like so, like that, and then we're just gonna wrap it around five times. So there's a length, one, two, three, four, five, you can go six, I'm doing six. Take that and go back through the top down. Okay. We just pull the trace quickly. Pulling our fluorocarbon nice and tight there so it straightens out. We take our size 4 power swivel or size 5 power swivel. Again, depending on the size of the bait that we're using and the size that you want to use, it's up to you. No real rules there. There's our figure of eight once again, pull tight. Just to make sure that our knot is tight, I'll just take the kindle round, stick it in there and then pull it so that the knot actually pulls tight. Give it a good pull, straightens out nicely. It's what we want fluorocarbon to do. And there we go, cut off the tag end. So there is our hook snooting complete. Next, we're going to take our Kingfisher nylon, which is a lot lighter. The reason we use our lighter sinker snooting is that if you do get stuck, you can break off. And if your cob takes you through the bricks, that the actual sinker part breaks off rather than the hook snooting part. Rule of thumb is to make it half the length of your um, hook snoot. So your sinker snooting is half the size or the length of your hook snoot and the reason being is basically so that the quarantine or mullet, whatever bait, live bait you're using, doesn't go around it and tangle up. Okay, so we keep it shorter and it also keeps it on the bottom a lot more because as you know, cob feed on the bottom, not up on the surface. Okay, so here we go, figure of eight again. And don't forget the link, the link's at the bottom. Just click on it. Figure of eight, complete. Cut off the tag in here. Take our power swivel. 
And in this one, I'm using size fours. One, two, three. There we go. Figure of eight is done. Slide it up. Cut that off. Take our Kingfisher bead. I'm just going to show you how it all goes together as a running trace. So this would be the leader coming off of your rod. Grab my sinker trace. I'm going to take my bead. And we use the bead pretty much as a stopper to protect the knot. So there we go. And we attach it with a figure of eight. Your leader line onto your hook snoot. Two, three times. Pull tight. Cut off. Okay, so there is pretty much our trace that we use for live bait, for throwing, for using a Carantina's bait for cob, or a mullet for cob. That's the trace that we use, guys. Now I'm going to show you how to rig the bait. So there is the trace that I've made. Kendall round with a 5 or 4 suey, it's up to you. This is our holding hook, and this is the one that's going to go under the chest. So first of all, what we do is we take our toothpick. Always remember, when you're working with live bait, to wet your hands or to use a wet cloth. A wet cloth definitely works a lot better. It calms the fish down and the weight of the cloth stops it from shaking around quite a bit. Okay, so there's the live caro. All we're gonna do is take our hook and we're gonna take out a little scale just on the side there. I just wanna grab one scale, there we go. Can you see I've just removed one of those little scales over there? Where that scale is, is at the bottom by the anal fin. Can you see the anal fin coming up? Go under the skin. We don't want to go deep under the skin, we just want to go under the skin. We take our mustard scissors, cut it off, take your finger and just push the toothpick like that under the actual skin. So you can see where that toothpick is actually sitting. That's where we're going to apply our holding hook. Okay, so we take our candle. The important thing is to remember that underneath caro, mullet, mozzie, the hardest part are where these two little fins are. That area there is a very, very hard area in any fish. Um, that is where you want to stick your hook to stop it from moving around. So we take our candle round, like so. We go in between that little plate that sits underneath it and just lightly under the skin for the length of the actual hook. When I say the hook, I'm talking about from the tip to just behind the actual barb. So that's how much is actually going to go into the actual uh, quarantine. So we go again just underneath. When we get to where the bend starts, we pull the hook out and we slide the hook along until we can get until we get to where that part is there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this now and we're just going to go underneath it as close to that as possible. So now I can feel where that toothpick is. The toothpick is holding on that actual bait. I now take this and I move it down just to take up a little bit of that slack. So there we go. So that is pretty much how we are rigging our quarantine, our live quarantine. Now what's going to happen on the bottom is the quarantine is going to be swimming like this. All the way around, the cob is going to come grab it and swallow it head first, hence that hook. That's the hook that uh, it hooks in most of the times at the bottom. And that is just a carrying hook for throwing purposes. So again, Caro, and I'm going to bring it a bit closer. Caro is going to be swimming all the way around like that. There's the hook that actually hooks the cob. That's your carrying hook or your throwing hook. Um, the reason we put it at the bottom and not at the top is when the hooks are at the bottom like this, what it does is forces the caro to actually swim up away from the resistance. Okay, very important. Swimming up. If you put them on the top, after 10 minutes, the weight of the hooks and the trace 
and everything against the fish pulls it down and it pretty much dies. This way the fish stays alive a lot longer guys. Okay, so that's it. That's how we rig our caro for live bait for throwing. And I'm just going to stand up quickly and show you what it looks like. There we go.